All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to uh, welcome Spencer Snickard, who is over in uh, Virginia, uh, outside DC. How are you doing, Spencer? Great. How are you, John? Oh, fantastic. And, and Spencer is an executive transformational coach, trainer and speaker. Uh, and uh, what we're going to talk about today is, is, is uh, I think, a very interesting topic here about, uh, I, I think, Spencer, a lot of people are very, very stuck right now. There are so many things that they feel are outside of their control. You know, we've lived through COVID. We're going into a recession. There's all sorts of other stuff going on. And, and and people feel kind of powerless. And when you say, well, you know, this is a great time to transform your life, they go, well, yeah, but I can't because all these things are happening and I feel powerless. So I default to just staying kind of status quo as best I can and sort of saying maybe next year when things settle down, I'll, I'll start to make some changes. So when you when you come across when you come across people like that, how do you help them break out of, of this mindset? <laughs> Well, there are many, there are many things that come to mind mm -hmm. immediately from that. But, um, you know, it's funny, the biggest thing that jumps to my mind when you start to, to talk about that is life is happening now and business mm -hmm. is happening now as well. Yeah. Um, maybe that's the yoga instructor. Maybe I was in me saying that I was a yoga instructor for 15 years. Um, but yeah, you know, there's always something, there's always going to be something that's coming. And so one of the first things I always start with, with anyone I work with is really getting clear on what do you want? What do you, what is your vision for your business, for your life? What is it that you want? Um, and how can we start bringing that to life right now? And, and if it is, you know, if there are reasons of things happening in the world that maybe for some reasons there, there is a good reason to put something off. In fact, I just had a coach, a conversation with my personal coach today about something that I brought up that I said, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. And she's like, are you sure this is the best time to be doing that? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, there are sometimes reasons why maybe something some things need to wait. But I think more often than not, what, what I read between the lines of what you're bringing up is that I think sometimes people are having this um, if then or first this, then that kind of thinking, uh, which oftentimes isn't isn't even as tied to the logistics and the nitty gritty as we sometimes think it is. Sometimes it's more even just about the experience or the ways of being or what are the things you can be doing now to be leading to that, even if there are circumstances or other things that may create challenges for it. Yeah, no, I, 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 I totally agree. And I think, uh, and I think that's it. I think I think we've gotten, or a lot of people have gotten into this postponement mindset. And as you say, there's always legitimate reasons to postpone things, but always pushing things into the future, like when this circumstance has arrived. I think it was James Joyce or somebody who wrote about when you do that, you're living at an arm's length from yourself, right? Because yes. everything is always a little bit of ahead, ahead of you as opposed to, as you say, living in the moment. Um, so, and, and I feel like we almost live in a, in a culture today where people, they almost want to stop you thinking or living in the moment because you're bombarded like social media or whatever. You've got so many distractions that you never have to actually spend any time sort of with yourself, basically. Yes. With your own thoughts. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And I find a lot of people too, especially many people in business, mm -hmm. many of us who go into business ha are go-getters. We're high achievers. We're super achievers, some of us. For some of us, that even is our identity of how high achieving we are and that we become defined by the things we accomplish and we get so focused. I know this may sound counter to what you just said of people putting things off, but I think simultaneously, there's also this aspect of go, go, I got to push and I'm going to push through you know, even with what you said of putting things off, sometimes it's like, well, I've got to push through this thing and stay totally mm -hmm. focused on this thing and put that other thing off so that when I get through this thing, then I can finally breathe, take some time off, take care of myself, go on a vacation with my family, um, take on that next project or that next big initiative that I'm thinking of taking on. And, um, you know, I had this, I had this realization uh, quite a while back now where I realized I was like, God, I'm exhausted all the time and I'm going and going and I was finding all my clients were having the same situation or just people that I was interacting with. And suddenly it struck me. I was like, God, it's like, it's like we're all running this marathon or 
it even felt to me a little like when I was learning to swim and in the pool with my, you know, with my parents. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if this is a global thing or not, but I, I remember <laughs> I, like as a kid, my parents being like, come on, sweetie, just a little bit further. And I finally realized one day as I opened my eyes, they were stepping back as I was swimming mm-hmm. towards them. So, <laughs> you know, they're saying a little further, but the end isn't coming. And for a lot of us in business, it's like we're running this race but the finish line keeps moving. We're never getting to the finish line. And so that really, I think, is where we need to start looking at, okay, where, like, what can we be doing now? Uh, Because we think when I get there, then I'll fill in the blank, you know, be happier, have more money, be able to do the things I want to do, be able to finally take a break, whatever. But it doesn't tend to work that way because the finish line is always moving. And ultimately, I think when it comes down to it, the finish line is death. So what are we really running for? What are we racing so hard for anyway? (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Not to get too morbid, but... Well, it's a, it a bit different in Ireland. They just took you down the deep end and pushed you in. And you either <laughs> learned how to swim or uh, you did it. Sink no. or swim, <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, um, but uh, so, no, I, 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 I agree with you. And I think that that uh, also there, there's a lot of like running around, pushing through things. But the thing is that what you said, which I think is probably the key of, to all of it is, I think too many people or too many of us don't know why we're doing what we're doing. Yes. And we don't really know. We can say, oh, yes, well, in a couple of years of this, but it's ill defined. It's not, it's kind of vague. And I think we live with a lot of um, vagueness. And that's why we're, we're kind of often like headless chickens because things are ill defined. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, it's easy to just have sort of rough ideas of where we're going. And, and I don't think that's, nece- that's, uh, that's not inherently a bad thing. I mm-hmm. think there's even, I think it's even a good thing sometimes to have a distinction between an intention or a vision versus a goal. So right. the vision might be bigger and a little looser and like the exact how isn't necessarily clear yet, but you just know this is the vision for the way you're heading. Um, whereas a goal I think is a lot more specific. Um, but yeah, you know, it's funny. I I just had a personal experience with this literally yesterday where I've, I've been working with a, a PR group about getting seen in media more, including not only mm-hmm. podcasts, but also like news media and right. magazines and things like that. And I made a declaration to my coach a couple of weeks ago. I said, I am getting on ABC7 in Washington, D.C. before I leave for vacation. And um, yesterday we found out about a major local potential crisis that's going on that need some rallying of community support. And I hadn't done it yet for my business. And yesterday I went, oh my God, I need to pitch the news media to bring awareness to this community issue about this thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. And I thought, yeah, maybe I should have been more clear with my my intention (laughs) and my declaration. It wasn't just about getting in the news. It was to be able to be, you know, promoting, marketing my, my, my message and getting my voice out in the world, not because there was a potential crisis I was trying to avert. So yeah, sometimes I think we we do need to be a lot more specific about what it is that that we want, what it is that we're aiming for. Um, and I think, like you said, a lot of times, a lot of us don't even know what that is. I'm always floored. Uh, I think I already said earlier, one of the first things I usually ask people is, what do you really want? And I'm always floored the, the blank looks I get sometimes from mm-hmm. people about like, gosh, you know, I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Well, I thought I knew, but I feel like where I'm going isn't it. And I'm not sure right now. And so it's a regular exercise I bring my clients back to again and again is what do you really want? And and what does that look like for you? And how is that going to work for the greater vision for your life? Because I think we really have to build We have to build a business that fits into the life we Mm -hmm. want, like design the life first and figure out how the business works with that versus if we're just so focused on the business and the go, 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 and I'm going to get this to this goal and then suddenly realize, you know, we're completely like we're ending up in the ICU from health crisis and our marriages are falling apart and we're 50 pounds overweight Mm -hmm. and, you know, whatever else is going on. Yeah, you know, and I agree. And that's why I think it's really important for people, you know, and especially now just to take a step back and and figure out what it is they, they truly want. Because I, I agree with you. I think it's very vague for some people. Some people don't really even know because they've defaulted into what they're doing or they're fulfilling expectations of other people yes. or society or, or whatever. Yes, um, what they think they're supposed to do. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the other thing that I was going to just ask you about is, and then when when sometimes when people okay make a decision and say okay i'm going to i'm going to do this this is the right time i'm going to do this with my business or whatever 
and then then all the demons appear, right? The imposter <laughs> syndrome. Yes. And it's amazing. The imposter syndrome is one of is one that's so powerful. And I don't think a lot of a lot, you know, many people understand it. Um, I've talked to highly, highly accomplished people who suffer from that. I mean, it's amazing. And yes. then they'll be like, well, you know, I'm uh, you know, probably not the best person to ask about that because yes. I'm not. you're going, what are you talking about? You know more about this than, you know, most people have forgotten, you know, whatever. So you'll forget <laughs> more. You'll forget exactly. more about this than most people will ever know. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's really it's it's fascinating to me. People that are that I that I meet with that are so brilliant and just like the top of their field and so in the know and have had such um, results and such impact. And then I had a client say to me one time, she said, you know, I was sitting in this room with this group of people that I was selected to be with for for leadership, and she said I was looking around the room and I felt like a little girl dressing up in my mom's high heel shoes, like clumping around as a little kid playing dress up. She said, you know, I felt like I was playing into this role. And it's something I think it's kind of like the higher we climb, the further there is to fall. Mm -hmm. And and ultimately, all of this, you know, really everything we've been talking about so far, I haven't, I want to just kind of bring it back to what I believe the source yep. is that might help people see this for themselves, is that ultimately, it's all about survival. You know, we forget even having just gone through a two year global pandemic, we forget that ultimately, we are just animals. And on the grand timeline, the span of, of human history, uh, um, modern conveniences are a tiny little blip on this, the timeline. And so ultimately, we're just still cavemen wired for survival who have to belong, have to fit in with our, our other people, our other family members that we're in the cave with. Um, we need that belonging to, to have the um, just the survival needs met to not get kicked out of the cave. And so a lot of people hearing this might think, oh, come on, Spencer, like we all got roofs over our head and food in our bellies and some of us millions and billions of dollars in the bank. Like we're doing fine. We're not just surviving, but really we are. And, and there's still this need for belonging. And so we, you know, we figure out early on, who do I need to be such that I won't get kicked out of the cave? And this is where a lot of times we take on identities of who we think we are, the smart one, the, the funny one, the strong one, the supportive one, the caring one, the athletic one, um, the person who has all the answers. But the thing is, while your identity can can do great things to get you successes in life and really has gotten you where you are, at some point it hits a limit. Because for instance, mm -hmm. the person who always has all the answers what happens when you don't have an answer or you right. get an answer wrong? And that I think is a lot of times where the higher we get and the more visible we are in our, um, you know, from the outside world looking at us as an expert, the more we're like, oh my God, they're going to find out. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh my God, what's going to happen when I don't have the answer? Or, or a super achiever, when I, what's going to happen when I fail? Or all mm -hmm. these different things that I, we're not conscious to any of this. Most of us are not consciously having any of these thoughts, but the subconscious is going on all the time. It's like 90 plus, 95 plus percent, some people have estimated, of our um, non-conscious cognitive thinking and awareness um, is what's happening. Like 95% of it is subconscious. So a lot of us aren't aware of this. And even if you think like, oh, that's a load of bunk, that's not applicable to me. If you're human, yeah, it does apply <laughs> to you and it is what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, absolutely. And, it, and it's funny. And it's funny because uh, I trust experts who actually will tell you when they don't know something. Yes. That for me, that's a huge trust building thing. Because if you ask an expert and you ask them and they're giving you an answer, and then you ask them something and they say, you know, I really don't know anything about that. I'd have to look that up. Or here's somebody who would know better. Yes. Now I trust them more. And, exactly. and I think that's the thing that people often overlook is that, yeah, you may be an expert in your field, but nobody's expecting you to know everything or yeah. be everything. And your experiences are unique too. So your your perspective on things is unique. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we all need to own that. We all have our own, um, like you said, our own experiences, our own just, it's almost like a, there's just so many facets to every one of us. And we almost sometimes think like, I've got to present this one flat uh, view to the world of how they see me or what they expect of me, but so not true. I feel like the more real we are and the more human and relatable we are, the more trustworthy we are. Yeah. And, and I think, and I think, I mean, I think it's always been there, but I certainly think the pandemic has, has accelerated it again, where people are back to craving that kind of, 
you know, realness, authenticity, humanity, if you like, um, yeah. because even because before the pandemic, I mean, there was, you know, we're a technology company, too. So, I mean, technology does a lot of wonderful things. Um, but I think the pendulum had gone a little too far where people were starting to retreat behind the technology. And I think everybody wants to have everybody wants to have some authentic connection, regardless of whether your business is a, is a very technological one or whatever. They still want to have some connection with who's behind the screen. Yeah, 100 percent. I agree. Yeah. So in, in those in those uh, situations, like when you when when people are starting and they're saying, OK, I think I'm ready, I'm ready to make a move with, with you. You you have this concept that I just wanted to touch on before the end is more comes at a cost, because I think sometimes we we live in a world now. And, and as I get again, a popular culture, everything's a shortcut, everything's easy, everything is instantaneous, instant mm -hmm. gratification, all of that. So yeah. we're, it runs counter to when you actually really embark on something and it's going <laughs> to actually take. So, um, so explain to me a little bit more about the more comes at a cost. Yeah, well, more just the idea of that I think a lot of people have this fear that to get more, there are going to be costs. Um, in mm -hmm. fact, I've been playing with a bit of a tagline lately of, you know, creating world changing impact without life sucking consequences, <laughs> because of things like costs that we worry about, like, mm -hmm. it's going to take more time, it's going to take more energy, it's going to take me away from my family, it's going to take me away from my um, ability to ever have a vacation or take a day off or exercise regularly, because I'm working 20 hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to come at a cost to my marriage because I'm, again, so focused on work that I don't have time to be with my partner, um, all of these things. And so even, even when we, again, consciously might be thinking, no, no, no I'm going to manage this. I'm going to do this. I can totally make this happen underlying are those fears about the things that, you know, but what if it all goes south? What if it tanks? Um, I've had a number of people say to me, making references about, you know, waiting for the other shoe to drop or when is the rug yeah. going to get ripped out from mm -hmm. under me? Um, one of my clients, when she first came to me, said that she had a, a multi seven figure full service ad agency um, at the peak of the, the housing market. Most of her customers were real estate developers. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, all the banks dried up and said, nope, no, no more money for you on your lines of credits. She had some insane number. I don't remember now how much it was, but I want to say it was like over, I, I, I want to say a million dollars. I don't even remember, but it was a very large number of outstanding receivables that never got paid because right. just the customers didn't get access to their funds. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, when she first came to me, she said, one of my biggest fears is going through that again. She's like, I'm always sort of anticipating or waiting for, okay, things seem good now, but when's it all going to fall apart? Um, and this is something even that people talk about, like Brene Brown talks a lot about this, like, you know, things, as soon as things get good, you start to worry, okay, but when is it going to go bad? Mm -hmm. So again, it's a natural human instinct. It's part of our survival needs. And so a lot of it, a lot of the work that I do with my clients is really just starting to look at, okay, what's first off, what's even true about this situation? Because just because something has happened before or because you yeah. had a thought or a belief or a feeling about something before isn't like necessarily truth with a capital T, like it's a guarantee it's going to happen again. Um, and even, you know, this is shifting gears a little, but I'll try to just tell this story very quickly. One client came to me saying, um, you know, I, I want to make more money, but not too much more. She's like, I'm not one of those people that wants to make a million, a million dollars. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And so as we dug into it, I said, look, I'm not saying you should want to, but I'm curious, why not? Can we talk about that? And what it really boiled down to was she had this either or thinking, like either I can have a successful business and do great things and right. travel the world and all that, or I can have the relationship and the family that I want, but I can't have both. And so she was unknowingly keeping both just mediocre and right. feeling terrible about both, feeling like, why am I such a failure and this is taking so long and I'm not where I want to be and I've been working so hard, what's wrong with me and all of these things. And so as we really started to uncover, well, where did those beliefs come from and are those beliefs true and what else is out in the world to shift your, as you start to shift your reality? Mm -hmm. um, and, and with that, what new actions can you take? Because no matter what the belief is, some of your listeners might think, Psh, well, that's whatever. That's that's a woman thing. That's not my thing. Or that's, you know, oh, I have no worries about that. That's not me. You have your thing. What 
whatever your thing is, we all mm -hmm. have fears of if I do this, it's going to come at this cost. And mm -hmm. so, um, and so we need to start to uncover those fears and where they've come from, if they're even true, not from a psychological perspective, but there's, there's ways we can just kind of quickly tap into what was the source of that? Like, even with her, she was able to very quickly see, well, yeah, these families I knew had this in their life and these families I knew who had that in their life. And then we mm -hmm. find evidence for it. So anyway, with her, she quickly started to look for new evidence and we started to work through her taking new scary actions into this new territory of, um, you know, who she was being in relationship and the risks and the growth that she was moving toward in business. And um, she ended up saying near the end of our, we just had a three month, um, three month engagement. She said, you know, I'm thinking that million dollars doesn't sound so bad after all. <laughs> and within a couple months, she had quadrupled her revenue mm -hmm. and quadrupled and more. She had some spikes way higher, but consistently quadrupled her revenue within 18 months she was hitting hundred thousand dollar months for for over a million dollar revenue and 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 she's working less she's working uh 40 percent less than she used to before making more than 10 times as much but it all came from those beliefs and those fears and the fears of the consequences the unintended consequences yeah. of success that she was trying to protect herself from which is what we all do yeah, yeah, no, and I think that's a, that's another one that people overlook is that whole fear of success. It's like how many times do people talk themselves out of something because they go, "Oh, this is really exciting, and this this new job or this new business opportunity, and it's going to be great," and then they go, "Ooh," but then I might have to move, or I'm yes. going to have to travel more, or I'm going, and you think, "Well, it hasn't even happened yet." So seriously, exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly, and there are other options. It's not yeah. like it's only this or that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, well, listen, then, Spencer, this has been fantastic. Um, all of Spencer's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Ah, um, <laughs> sorry, I'm used to that coming at the beginning. I'm like, okay, we're wrapping with that. Yes. So yeah, so I, I love working with people on, you know, if you're if there's goals you're out to accomplish, and especially if you feel like you've been up, up against some sort of resistance. Um, you know, if you're familiar with the upper limit problem as described by Gay Hendricks, that's a lot of what I do with people is help you break through whatever those barriers are to your next level of success, so that you have the power and the freedom to fully achieve. Um, everything that you're out to achieve, whether it be the impact you're here to make or the profit that you're here to, to clear or the time and, and impact and various things you want to make have available or make in the world. Um, that's what I'm all about helping you do. So please reach out. I'd love to have a conversation about how I could support you. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you. And I would really encourage you to go and check uh, check out Spencer's work. Um, you know, what do, what do they always say? Best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. Second best time is right now. So <laughs> absolutely, um, you know, get out there, you know, check out Spencer's work, get out there, plant your tree and uh, you know, start living the life you really want. Again, thanks, Spencer, for today. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.